Hey guys, welcome to another episode. So, uh, oops, wait, I put on a shirt, but I forgot my, my background. Okay. Perfect. Uh, so, yeah, uh, today we're uh, taking a look at uh, some Excel good stuff. Lately, I've been working on my uh, Excel budget modeling course. Um, I've actually talked on the channel about creating an Excel course, I don't know, maybe two years ago, never got around to it. I finally started and actually having to stay at home has helped me a lot because the last two weeks I've pretty much finished it up to 95%. You're gonna hear all about it in a separate video, but uh, I was looking into different forecasting options because I realized that uh, there's so many complex ways to forecast, let's say, sales or, or any kind of expenses. And uh, at the end of the day, every time I work with clients, I always go to the most simple uh, methods because, because the whole purpose of a budget is to be a guideline and um, you have some predefined assumptions that you know about and you can implement in your uh, forecast and from here on, you don't need a complex model. Uh, some simple forecasting functions are enough and uh, that's what I wanna uh, look at today. It's a bit of a longer video, but we're gonna look at a few different examples and uh, it's gonna be uh, really beneficial for your modeling efforts. Let's dive right in. So here we have uh, some uh, sales data for the last two years monthly data and we want to forecast our uh, 2021. But what we can do is we can use a linear forecast function. This would look forecast linear and um, it would ask us for an X known Y's and known X's. So basically we are using a formula. You can see it up here. Y equals function of X. So our Y is our sales, the thing that we want to forecast. And the only thing we can make it a function of is our period. So this is our period. Our known Y's are gonna be all the sales. And our known X's are gonna be all the periods. And this gives us our uh, formula here. So we can fix those ranges. And based on them, we can go ahead and forecast all our periods down here. And this is a linear forecast. So it's a straight line, the line that best fits uh, the data. But you can probably notice that we have seasonal data here. So we have strong December and uh, strong July. So it's some kind of a seasonal business. So this might not be the best uh, way to do it. To check this, let's go ahead and uh, just gonna carry that over. So it's gonna show nicer in our uh, graphic. So let's go ahead and just make a chart. Go to insert and select a line chart. You can see that we have highly seasonal data. And uh, one way to, to see uh, our forecast is to add a trend line. By adding a trend line, we can use a linear forecast and we can show the equation of our function, this function here, what this formula is doing, and also our R squared. R squared, it's um, basically the closer this is to one, the better the line represents the data set. And you can see that it's really close to zero right now, so this is not the best way to forecast. We're gonna look at uh, better options, but the idea is that um, you can either use the, the formula or, or if you want to represent it, you can also use uh, this here, uh, this function y equals 6.9436 multiplied by our x minus 279651. Okay, and uh, by copying this down, you can see that we have about uh, one deviation. And uh, this is because those numbers here are rounded. You can also calculate those. You don't have to take them from the from the chart. So those are called your slope and your intercept. Your slope is the slope function. So we need the known y's, which are our sales, and our known x's, which are our periods. And you can see that here it was rounded. And our intercept, 
it's the same formula, known Y's and known X's. It's not 51 at the end, it's 0.66. So if you use those, so our Y equals this fixed with 4 multiplied by our X plus, because the negative sign is already here, plus this with F4. And you can see that we get the same result as the linear forecast uh, formula. And uh, just to make sure that we're talking about the same thing, um, if we just go ahead and for our uh, data, we extend this, you can see that the forecast function perfectly follows our trend line. This is probably not the best way to forecast seasonal sales, especially on a monthly basis. If it was on an annual basis, it's a bit better to use the, the linear forecast uh, function. Let's go ahead and uh, look at another way to forecast, um, the moving average. So you take the average of some kind of previous period. For this business, it's a bit seasonal. I'm gonna try it for one year and you move it down and it's going to move the average with itself but uh, you should notice that we have an issue here we don't we're not getting these amounts therefore i'm just going to link them here it's probably not the best way to represent it but i just wanted to have the moving average in a separate column now we can see that everywhere it takes uh, the past 12 months let's go ahead and plot this on a chart and see how we're doing. You can see that it's a bit better, still really misses the, this seasonality. We can try and uh, just do it on a six month basis to see if this might improve something. It gets uh, the, the mid uh, season seasonality, but it completely misses the one at December. Something that's much better is actually an Excel uh, function that's, uh, that's within Excel. It's uh, called a forecast sheet. I've already talked about it in another video, but uh, let's just quickly show how we can get much better data here. So it's under uh, data forecast sheet just select everything here in the options so you have the forecast end and uh, it gathers that we're looking at uh, two years and it just wants to add another year you can extend it look at this it doesn't represent our movement so well we can see that it's uh, caught the seasonality uh, of a six month uh, interval not the 12 months because we also have uh, some highs in july so let's just switch that to 12 and you're gonna see that it gets much closer to the prior year graphics. Tap create and uh, here's your forecast. This is gonna be your lower confidence bound, this one here, so this is gonna be your pessimistic forecast and this is gonna be your main forecast. And uh, this is by far a much better and I gotta say much faster and easier way to forecast uh, sales and other kinds of performance when uh, you have any kind of seasonality. Let's also take a look at the real life example from a course that I'm working on. So we have the sales for the past uh, five years here and we have uh, the, the last year broken down in months. What we want to do is we wanna forecast for 2021. One uh, easy way to do that is to calculate the average sales for um, the last year. And uh, then we can use that to calculate our seasonality. We already know that there's some seasonality. So we know that some of those months are gonna deviate quite a lot from our average. Let's just divide each month over the average and fix that and show it in percentages. And we can use that for our uh, seasonality. We're gonna reverse the equation and use this seasonality to calculate our forecast. But to do that, we'll need an average. We're gonna grab the average from the total for the year which we're going to calculate over here, 2021. We're gonna use our uh, linear forecast. So forecast.linear, our X, our known Ys, and our known Xs. Here we have our rough forecast for 2021. So now we can use that to calculate an average by dividing this over 12 months. 
and then we can use this average, fix it with F4 and multiply it by our seasonality percentage to get our monthly forecast. And you can see that it's the same amount as the one here. Okay, is this a better forecast? Um, yeah, probably yeah, because um, in in certain situations we'll ask our um, our sales manager, our uh, sales department to prepare a sales plan, and we actually have that right here. Let's just compare what we forecasted uh, and what they had as a sales plan. Insert a chart. We can see that it's pretty close. Uh, one thing that we can notice is that we have for forecasted a significant increase over the sales plan and uh, maybe that's due to the huge leaps uh, in sales every, every year. Maybe the sales manager knows something more. So let's see how much the total is of, uh, of the sales plan. Yeah, it's about 30 something million less than what we forecasted, 34 million. So we were a bit over optimistic. That's because we just expect the same growth. If we know a bit more about the company, so we know, let's say that we only expect about 1% uh, growth, then you can see that we start getting much closer and uh, it's pretty much the same. So apart from uh, September and October, we're uh, keeping pretty much the same seasonality compared to the sales plan and uh, actually I know for a fact that the sales plan was prepared based on confirmed orders. You can see that in this case uh, forecasting with uh, our seasonality percentage uh, does a pretty great job. Okay guys, that was it for today. I just wanted to share uh, like the most basic and at the same time the most often used uh, methods to forecast uh, performance and forecast sales. Really hope you enjoyed it. Uh, give this video a thumbs up if you did. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you're not already. And maybe even punch that bell icon to receive notifications every time I upload a new video. Uh, till then, thanks for watching and uh, see you next time. Okay.